Hey, this is Jordan Conroy, and you're listening to Tank Talk, presented by KG Tropicals. Thank you, Jordan. Welcome, folks, to another episode of Tank Talk, presented by KG Tropicals and my good friends down at UniversalRocks.com. I am your host, John Hudson, from KG Tropicals. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I am sorry that I missed you last week and Well, that's all I'm going to say about that, because I can't stand long apologies, not going to make a bunch of excuses, but what I can tell you is this, I am doing what I got to do to make sure that that doesn't happen again. Maybe we'll touch on that later, but I'm going to do my best to make sure that I never miss another episode, because I can't stand that, and I know you can't either. So, what is this show? This is all about helping you to progress in the aquarium hobby. If you would like to participate in the show... You can email me at tanktalkfeedback at gmail.com. Send in your topic suggestions, ask questions, whatever you want to do, send them in now because you might just see those questions or those suggestions get addressed on the show. And today we've got a couple emails that came in that we're going to address on the second half of the show. But before we do that, we're going to talk today about getting rid of fish. That's going to be a lot of fun and I don't mean killing them I mean what do you got to what are you going to do if you got to get rid of your fish your we're going to talk all about that okay I don't want to get too deep into it but I do have some updates for you and one of them is a big one this is one that I've been wanting to make for a while and that is we got some fish in last week it was a small order not an overwhelming shipment like you're used to seeing from us but We had to get this train rolling again, and you got to start somewhere. So we did get a small shipment of fish last week. I'm excited about it. I have yet to do a shipment video, which is something that I get so many requests for. People love those. I never knew that it was going to be quite the phenomenon that it is, but those videos got a lot of views for us, and it was kind of part of just what we did. It was part of our routine. We get a shipment in, we do a video of them, and all of a sudden the orders start piling in. But the problem is the setup that we have now, because it's so new, because we just set it up, it it doesn't show very well right now. So I'm working on that. Hopefully I'll get something today to show you and show you the fish that we got. And you can go on our website and order them, and we will ship them right out to your door. Definitely excited about that. Uh, I had some times there where I thought, you know what, we're never going to get fish again. So it was really exciting to do that and uh, to get those in here to get things kick-started again. So definitely excited. Check out the website, kgtropicals.com. You will see the new inventory listed on there. We got mostly smaller, unsexed African cichlids if you're new to the show. I deal in African cichlids on my website. I ship them direct to your house via FedEx overnight priority shipping. And you can see everything that we have listed on the website, kgtropicals.com. Unfortunately, I can only ship to my friends here in the U.S. I cannot ship overseas. I cannot ship to Canada. It's our government's fault, folks. It's not mine. So it's not that I don't want to. It's just that our governments make it way too difficult to ship live animals over the border. So sorry about that. I get it's probably the most common email that I get. Can you ship to Canada? Can you ship to here? Can you ship to there? And unfortunately, I can't. So what are you going to do? I don't have the money to go out and get all of the proper licensing and do all of the kind of stuff that needs to be done. So maybe that might be something that we can do down the road, but I don't see it happening anytime soon. Hey folks, it's time to talk about a little company you may have heard of, my company, KGTropicals.com. At KGTropicals.com, you'll find tons of information and content all about the fish keeping hobby. From video tutorials to podcast episodes and articles, there's even a forum where you can go and visit with other fish keepers. For African cichlid lovers, KG Tropicals is your dream come true. Not only can you research some of your favorite fish, but you can also order them directly from the site and we'll ship them direct to your door with a live arrival guarantee. We've partnered with world-renowned farms to provide you with the highest quality fish you'll find anywhere on the internet. If African cichlids aren't your thing, you can still find tons of great information on kgtropicals.com. You can even order all of your supplies and materials direct from the site at the lowest prices anywhere. kgtropicals.com, your one-stop shop for everything fish keeping. 
All right, welcome back. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to do that. We're going to talk today all about getting rid of fish. This is something I get a lot of questions about, and I don't have a specific email that I got saying, hey, you should do a video or a, or a podcast all about this. It's just that it's one of those common questions that I get, you know, people asking advice, what should I do? I've got all these fish and I need to get rid of them. So I thought it was worthy of talking about here. So let's talk about some of the reasons why you would need to get rid of fish. Cause that's kind of a broad term, getting rid of fish. There's a lot of reasons why. And if you're an African cichlid person, then it's probably already happened to you where all of a sudden, uh oh, your fish spawn. And now you have all these babies cause you're like me. You can't kill them all. And so you have all these babies, you've raised them up. Now they're, you know, juveniles and it's time to let them go because you either have another spawning that has happened and you've got more fry or you just don't feel like dealing with constantly raising these fish and having an overabundance of them. So the accidental spawning is something that happens a lot, particularly in the African cichlid world, but it also happens a lot with people who keep things like angels some of your live bears are going to just be constantly reproducing and you can't do anything about it. Some of them are like snails. I mean, they're just all of a sudden you got a tank full of these fish and you don't know what to do. So the, the accidental spawning is one of the very common reasons why you would need to get rid of fish. And I'm going to talk about that extensively here in a minute. But some of your other reasons why you might want to get rid of your fish. Maybe you saw a fish at the fish store, you bought it. You thought, oh, this is so cool. And then you realized this fish is not going to work in your setup because it's going to get too big or because it doesn't get along with the fish that you already have. Or maybe you've had these fish all along and all of a sudden they've just started bickering with each other. They're killing each other. So you want to get rid of some of them to, to keep the peace and keep the ones that you like the most, keep them happy and healthy. So, you know, you could be switching to a new kind of fish. Maybe you've been keeping community fish this whole time and you got a really cool tank and it's full of tetras and barbs and platies and things like that. But you know, you're like, okay, I've had enough of this. I've had these for a few years. I want to move on to something different. I want to bring the spark back. I want to go and I want to fill my tank full of angels or I want to fill it full of discus or Africans, whatever it is. Maybe you might just be switching your fish because you only have room for one tank. You can't go and buy another one and you just want to do an all over makeover. That's also a very common thing. But I would say the one that is the most common underneath the accidental spawning would be fish are getting too big for your tank. This is a very common situation. Plecos, Oscars, Pakus, Gar, I mean, I'm going to do an entire episode. We're going to talk next week about monster fish. But a lot of times what happens is people will buy fish having no idea that they get as big as they do. Maybe it's because the people at the store were just being lazy and didn't feel like talking about it. Or maybe you just pointed at the fish and said, I want that one without even doing in any kind of research on the fish. Whatever it is, we have probably all been in that situation. I know I have. When I first got into the hobby, I bought fish that did not belong in the size tank that I had. So that's a very common thing. Or it could be, you know, you, you went to your local pet store because your tank had a lot of green algae in it. And you heard that those crazy dinosaur looking things that stick to the walls, you heard that they're really good for cleaning up all of that algae and you put it in the tank and it did, it did a great job. But now all of a sudden it's the biggest thing in your tank and it's not going to stop growing. That is probably the most common fish that people want to get rid of is plecos because they have a 29 gallon tank. The person at the store didn't stop them from buying it and they put it in this small tank and all of a sudden it's the biggest thing in there. That happens all the time. And it can even happen with something like Oscars. You go and you buy an Oscar and it's the size of a quarter and it's adorable. It's got these big gigantic bug eyes and you're like, that's the cutest thing I've ever seen. What you didn't realize was that that fish is going to get as big as a basketball. And you're like, oh no, what am I going to do now? These are all reasons why you might be in a position to need to get rid of fish. Or it could be that you've had enough. It happens. It's happened to me. 
where you got to take a break or you, you're just out of it. Maybe you don't have time. You're too busy with work or school or you're coaching your kids in soccer or whatever it is. And you just say, you know what? The fish tank has to go and you have to get rid of the fish. There's a million different reasons why you would want to do it. I actually have, this is, this is honest to God. You've heard of people that have gotten rid of a dog because it bit the kid or, you know, you got, they got rid of their dog because the neighbor's kid came and, and came onto their property and the dog chased them and you were afraid that the dog was going to be too mean. And so you got rid of the dog or, or somebody that, you know, we've all heard those stories. I've never gotten rid of a dog and I never would, but you know, you've heard those stories. I had a customer come into the shop and had a story like that with a fish. Yes, it's true. This fish, I, I don't recall what kind of fish it was. It was a cichlid of some type. And it was a, a large cichlid, something like a flower horn or a Oscar or whatever. And this fish, they had a small child in the house. And I guess the child could get up to the top of the tank and would stick his fingers in there and the fish would bite his fingers. And so instead of, you know, teaching the kid not to put his stupid hand in the tank, they decided it was more appropriate to get rid of the fish. But, you know, okay. There's a million different reasons out there why you might need to get rid of fish. And the good thing is that there's a million ways of doing just that. There's so many different ways of getting rid of fish. It's very easy. You don't have to kill them. You don't take them out and throw them in the pond. I mean, there's there's lots of different ways. We're going to talk about the best ways to get rid of them. And we're going to talk about the ways that you absolutely should not get rid of your fish. Uh, and then we're going to talk at, at the end, we're going to talk just for a minute about disposing of dead fish. Now, this is something that, you know, people who keep little tetras and barbs and things like that, you're never going to really have a problem because you can throw them right down the toilet. But when you have some monsters like I do, and you've had in the past, I've had to get rid of fish that were almost 30 inches long. That can be a challenge of what to do with those. And so we're going to talk about that. We're just going to touch on it a little bit uh, towards the end of the episode before we get to the emails, because I've got a really good email to get to today. So, okay. First thing and the easiest thing that you can do to get rid of fish is sell them. Duh. <laughs> Everybody's like, Oh God, John. Okay. Can tell us something. Thanks. Captain obvious. You know, I love those commercials, but selling them, is the easiest way and the best way because you're going to sell them to somebody who is going to care for them and appreciate them. They're going to go to a good home. At least that's what you hope. And maybe you make a couple dollars off of it. Who knows? But selling them is the best way to go. But we need to address something here, folks, because this is probably what frustrates people the most when it comes to selling their fish. It doesn't matter why you're getting rid of your fish. Selling them is, is the best way to go, but it's also for a lot of people, the most frustrating because they don't understand the expectations of what they should get as far as price goes, because they, they have this fish that's 12 inches, uh, Oscar. I mean, I always use Oscars, but I love them. And there's one sitting right in front of me. So I always use Oscars. They have this huge Oscar and they, they're under this impression that because the fish is three years old and it's 12 inches long that they should be able to make a fortune off of this fish. And it's probably the biggest mistake that people make in selling their fish is asking too much money for them. You can't expect to make top dollar off of any of these fish folks. Maybe if you have a tank full of six inch round or seven inch round discus, you can make some money off of those. However, you can even have a challenge getting big money for those because there might be people that have been in this hobby for a long time. They come to you and they say, how old are these fish? And you say, well, these discus are five years old. And so I want to sell them for $200 a piece and, you know, go buy a car once I sell all of these fish. Somebody who knows discus and knows the deal is probably not going to pay top dollar for those. Why? Because they're already middle-aged. There, you're going to buy a fish for $200 and only have them for, you know, four or five years if you're lucky. I mean, and that's a 10 year old discus. That's not a lot of people out there with stories of discus that old. So 
unless you run into somebody who has disposable income that is having a wedding and they want their tank to be full of gorgeous, big, gigantic discus and they're willing to pay top dollar, we all get lucky from time to time. But if you have these big, grown adults of any type of fish, a lot of times people won't pay top dollar for them because they're not going to be around much longer. It's like adopting a dog that's eight years old. I mean, you know, it's it's not likely that somebody who knows what they're doing is going to do that. They may buy the fish, but to expect top dollar would be kind of foolish. So understand what these fish are worth and understand that it may be, if you've tried selling fish in the past, it may be your price that kept you from selling them. I mean, I've looked on Craigslist. I'm, I'm a Craigslist junkie. I've looked on Craigslist before where people have, you know, a, a 55 gallon tank and in there they have two full grown giant Oscars and they're asking $300 for the two Oscars. Are you kidding me? I mean, that's ridiculous. They grow so fast. You can buy them for five bucks a piece and in a year have them at the same size. So anybody that would pay that kind of money for a couple of Oscars is, is just ridiculous. But you know what? We all get lucky and you may come across somebody who's not smart enough to know better than to buy fish like that. But selling them for too much money is the biggest mistake that people make when selling them. And so do some research on that. Look on these different websites that we're going to talk about in a minute. Look around, go to the pet store, see how much they're sold for when they're small and you can come up with a reasonable price to get rid of your fish. And look, if the end result is just getting rid of them, you shouldn't really be looking to get top dollar. You're trying to move these fish to a better place, to somewhere that's going to take better care of them than you are, or just a fellow hobbyist because you're not getting out. You're just getting different types of fish. You want to give them to somebody that is, you know, going to take good care of them. It's not about making a bunch of money. So set your expectations the right way when it comes to the price. And again, there are some fish that are the exception to the rule. The, you know, fish that are super big or the discus and stuff like that. If you have angels that are as big as an IHOP pancake, I mean, the, you can get some reasonable money for that. But again, don't price yourself out of being able to sell them. So there, that's enough of that. But selling them is going to be the best way because especially if you're trying to go into another type of fish, then it can help you to buy the new fish. So selling them is is a great way of doing it, but can also be a, a bit overwhelming when you think about it because what are you going to do? Are you going to advertise them online or how are you going to sell them? Who are you going to sell them to? And that's what we're going to talk about here next. There's a lot of different ways. I mentioned Craigslist earlier. Now, Craigslist is a great way to sell fish because you're going to get it out to a mass audience. People that live all around you are going to be able to see your ad. It's free. You're not paying a bunch of money to place an ad in classifieds that nobody even looks at anymore. Craigslist is a great way of getting rid of them. But there are people, and I don't blame them, there are people that are a bit nervous about the concept of strangers coming to their house. And I totally understand that. I mean, you know, our homes are our sanctuaries and you got some stranger coming to the house that you've only communicated with through email. They might be a mass murderer. I mean, it's, it's a little bit intimidating. I get that. But for me, I mean, I've sold so many things on Craigslist. It's ridiculous. I've bought so many things off Craigslist. I'm comfortable with it. If you're not, I understand. Let's talk about some other things that you can do. But let me just tell you this. There are other ways, too, that you can still utilize Craigslist and not have that threat. You know, maybe you're a paranoid person. These days, I don't blame you. I mean, I'm not going to make fun of you for that. If you don't want people coming to your home, I get it. Maybe you can make arrangements to meet someone somewhere. I mean, let's face it. You're going to have pictures on your ad that people are going to see the fish. It's not like they're going to be surprised by what it is. It's not like they're going to say, well, I want to come and see what the fish looks like first. They're going to know what the fish looks like because you had pictures of them on your ad. You could send them more pictures, maybe send them a video or something like that 
of the fish. The technology's out there. It's easy. I don't care if you're 78 years old. You can figure out how to show your fish to these people before you ever even meet them to make the transaction. So you're not surprising them with anything. You you might make arrangements, say, look, you know, if you want to buy this fish, I'll meet you at Home Depot down the road and I'll give them to you there. You know, that might be a really good way of doing it. And I know a lot of people that have done it that way. In fact, there I, I don't recall the name, so I, I'm not even going to try to say it. And even if I knew the name, I wouldn't say it. There is a, a business that sells fish and they do it that way. They won't allow you to come to their facility, whether it's at a commercial facility or if it's at their house. I don't know. I don't even remember. I just remember reading about this. They'll meet you somewhere and, and sell you the fish. So it's not uncommon to do it that way. Meet at a Walmart parking lot or a Home Depot or a Wawa if you have those where you're at. We got Wawas here. But <laughs> whatever it is, that might be something meeting in a public place that makes you feel a little bit more comfortable about selling these fish to a stranger. But obviously, you know, having them come to the house, the fish is in the tank, they can see it and they decide that they want to buy it. That's that's probably the best way to do it. So, but maybe you're somebody that had a bad experience on Craigslist or the 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 tales of the Craigslist killer is something that still resonates in your head and you're just you've completely banished Craigslist from your life. Okay, that's fine. There are other ways. There's plenty of other ways. They involve a little bit more work on your part, but you know what? If you get rid of your fish and they go to a happy home and everybody at the end of the day is happy, then it's worth the work. So these would be other websites that you can sell your fish on that, again, are going to require a little bit more work. Websites like Aquabid and eBay. There's a lot. There are people that make a living selling live fish on eBay. And I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know how they do it because they'll sell you a fish for 10 bucks and give you free shipping. I don't know how they do this. I've never purchased a fish off of eBay and I've never sold one on eBay, but there's a lot of people who do. So, you know, Aquabid, if you haven't heard about of Aquabid, it's a great website. It is basically eBay for fish and aquarium supplies and things like that. So you can go on Aquabid and basically what you run into on Aquabid, the majority of people selling fish on there are people that are in the exact same position you are. Whether they they had an accidental spawning or maybe they've started breeding and they're they're breeding fish just to make the money to support the hobby. Whatever it is, it's usually hobbyists that have fish to sell that sell on Aquabid. Not a whole lot of businesses sell on there. And it's not that they're not allowed. I've actually advertised on Aquavid before. It's not that you're not allowed. It's just the majority of people on there are hobbyists like yourself that for whatever reason are selling fish. A lot of them are going to be smaller, not full grown fish. And that's something that you need to think about when you're selling your fish online. Okay. The, the price and, and what the fish are and how big your fish are. If you have two 16 inch dovi that you want to sell on aquabid you you need to think about how are you going to ship those fish to people i mean yeah you can make the ad pick up only that's fine if you're going to do that you might as well advertise for free on craigslist aquabid's free too until you make the sale but you know you got to think about those things if you have a bunch of small fish aquabid is going to be perfect for you if you're the person that had the accidental spawning because you got all of these fish you want to, you know, you might find somebody that buys 12 of them all at one time. Aquabit is going to be perfect for that. But if you have a tank, a 29 gallon tank, and in that tank you have 25 Cardinal Tetras, nobody's going to buy those off of Aquabit because it's going to cost more to ship them than it would be to even buy the fish. And they can walk right down to their local pet store and buy Cardinal Tetras for a dollar or two a piece. So you have to think about before you go on these websites, Think about what the fish are and if they're worthy of somebody buying online and you shipping them. And if they're 12 inches long, good luck shipping fish that big. I mean, it can be done. I've seen it done. I've done it. But it's not cheap and it's not fun and you will not sleep the night that they are in transit. So before you advertise them on eBay or Aquabid, you need to think about those things. Think about 
whether it's going to be worth it for somebody to pay shipping. At the end of the day, you're more likely to lose money selling them on one of these websites. And the reason for that is because of shipping. You might put on your ad $15.99 for shipping, which a lot of people do, which is just ludicrous because you live in Vermont and somebody in Arizona orders them. You can't control that. You can't control who orders them and where they're from. And so now you're going to overnight these fish from Vermont to Arizona and it's going to cost you $78 to ship it and you charge $15.99. You have to be careful. You have to be smart. But you can do it. You can sell them online and you can make some money. Usually, I, I don't know this as fact, but usually the people that are selling on Aquabid are only looking to make a couple dollars. They're not looking to, you know, go buy a new car with the fish that they sell on there. And again, eBay, I don't know how they do it. I don't know how the people make money on eBay selling live fish. And, and the, the reason why I say that is because they give away free shipping. I don't know how you do that. I mean, it's, it's just ridiculous how much shipping costs to, to these fish. So to ship these fish. So advertising on websites, Craigslist, Aquabit, eBay, great ways to do it. Craigslist being the most ideal because somebody will come to you. You don't have to worry about shipping them and all that kind of stuff. But then you do have the, the whole stranger in my house type thing. So maybe none of those things appeal to you. Maybe you don't want to have anything to do with all of that. There are other ways you can look into local aquarium clubs in your area. Now there's aquarium clubs everywhere. I live in a small town in rural Virginia and we have them here. So trust me, they are everywhere. You just have to look for them. You might have to drive a bit, but find out when they're doing their next auction. You can take your fish there again People who buy fish at these auctions are looking for deals. They're not going to pay you top dollar, so know that going in. But aquarium clubs are a great way to to find a place to sell them, whether it be at one of the auctions or you might even be able to advertise on their own website that you have your fish for sale. It's just another way. You're going direct to the source. With Craigslist, it's not like they have an aquarium section or a live fish section. You're technically not supposed to sell live fish on Craigslist. So you put your ad out there and you're just hoping a fish tank person happens to be on there and sees that. Well, if you advertise on a local aquarium club's classified section, these are people in your area that are directly involved in fish keeping. So you're more likely to find somebody that way, but it is a little bit more work and it can be a hassle. And so there is that. So Next thing is donating your fish. Now, I don't know about you. Again, I live in the country. My county, King George County, is a is a huge county, but it's a rural county. We only have four schools, and three of them are elementary schools. We've got three elementary schools, one middle school, and one high school. But I can tell you this. All four of those schools have aquariums in them. Maybe they're running low on fish. Maybe the fish that you have would go well with the fish in there. You could donate them. Now, if you have a 24-inch Paku or a 20-inch Arowana or Dovi, they're not going to take a fish like that. I mean, maybe if the science teacher or the biology teacher has a big, huge tank in his classroom, which I highly doubt, you know, then maybe you could. But donating them to schools is something that you absolutely can do. Advertise them, you know, free fish on bulletin boards, different places like that. You can definitely find places to donate fish. And you can even donate them by way of Craigslist, which is actually the way Craigslist prefers because they don't like you selling live animals. They like you to rehome or have an adoption of your fish uh, or any live animals for that matter. So, but if you put on there on Craigslist free fish, you know, to a good home, you're going to get rid of them. Trust me, they're going to go really quick. And that's much easier than trying to coordinate with a principal if you can donate them to the middle school or, I mean, I'm just throwing that out there as a suggestion. But if you put, put word out there, whether it be on the websites or whatever, you've got fish that you just need to get rid of. You will not have a problem finding somebody that's going to come and grab them from you. Trust me. So, and then the last thing is trading or selling them to your local pet store. Now I know this is not my favorite option here, folks, and I'm just being honest with you, but it is an option. 
The reason why it's not my favorite option is because I've been on the other end of that and I didn't like it very much. I did not like people coming into my shop with a bucket. This is somebody I've never met. I don't know them from anywhere. And they come into my shop with a bucket full of fish and they say, you want to buy these for 20 bucks a piece? No, I don't. Now I've made an enemy. I don't like it. I just don't like the whole idea of those kind of things. But Maybe your local pet store, maybe the owner there is a little nicer than I am, and maybe they will work out deals with you. It's worth a shot. But my advice to you, if you're thinking about donating them, or not donating them, but selling them or trading them to your local pet store, go in there and talk about them first. Don't just bring a bucket in there full of your Jack Dempsey's that spawned. Don't do that, because... You know, there's a couple of things that can happen in that scenario. The the owner's going to say, get your stupid fish out of here, or they might offer you next to nothing because they know you're desperate. You're so desperate that you've already bagged these fish or you've already put them in buckets and brought them here. They know you don't want to go home with those fish, and so they might say, yeah, I'll give you 50 cents for the whole bucket. I mean, I know there's people around me that have done that, and, you know, they kind of got you by the you-know-whats, when you bring a bucket of fish in there. So talk to them about it first, make the deal first, and and then you might be able to do it that way. And also understand that a local fish store, if you're going to sell them or trade them fish, they need to make a profit off of it. So they're going to give you less than what they can get their fish from their suppliers for. So if I can buy a Cardinal Tetra for a dollar, why am I going to pay you $2 a piece for them? OK, so understand that, you know, you, you do have to, to go in there with an expectation of your your local fish store needs to make a profit. And don't be offended by that. You're not going to get top dollar. You're not even going to get wholesale for them. So easy. Just go in there expecting to be disappointed. That's that's probably the best advice that I could give you. So in a lot of times, the, the other thing that makes this good, if you have a good relationship with your local pet store, or it, it could make you get very frustrated, is the fact that a lot of local pet stores, including mine, would not pull cash out of the register to buy your fish. You have 10 fish that we've agreed that I'm going to give you a dollar a piece on. I'm not pulling $10 out of my register. You just got yourself $10 in store credit. That's the way most pet stores are going to do it. So also know that going in. Maybe you're going for another type of fish. Maybe you're doing the whole tank switch over thing. And so that's fine because you get your store credit. You can use that credit towards the purchase of your new fish. Everybody's happy. But if you go in there trying to get beer money for the weekend and you're expecting to walk out with $25 in cash, most likely that's not going to happen. And pretty much every pet store I've ever known does it that way. Where, you know, you walk in with a bucket full of fish, you walk out with an empty bucket and a can of fish food. I mean, that's just the way it works. So know that going in. Now, there are some customers that we had that we're, we've become friends with, that we know. We know them well. We, we interact with them outside of the business and everything else. We have had them where they have actually donated fish to us. Uh, the, the best example of this would be my friend Chuck Kaner, who I've talked about a lot. Little Chuck, I've talked about him in a lot of my videos. One of the nicest individuals I've ever met in my life. He is an African cichlid nut, and he has the occasional accidental spawning. He loves it. He loves that whole concept. He loves watching the little babies, and he loves all that stuff, but... He doesn't want to have anything to do with getting rid of the fry. So he'll just bring them to us and he hands them over and he says, there you go, raise them up and sell them. And we do that. We do that for him, but we wouldn't just do that for any old stranger. So it's not difficult getting rid of your fish. There's a lot of different ways of doing it. And there's, you know, some are easier than others, but these days with technology being as advanced as it is and as easy as it is to put things online and stuff like that, you can do the entire thing with your phone. It's not difficult to get rid of fish. So the, the only one that I'm going to tell you that you should not do when you're trying to get rid of fish is very obvious. Do not take your fish and throw them into old man Miller's pond down the road 
and don't take your fish and throw them into the rivers. Common sense. I'm not going to go on a rant. I'm not going to do that, but that that's just ridiculous to do something like that. So donate them to a local fish store, donate them to a little kid that wants to get into the hobby, sell them to somebody else, put them on Craigslist, do whatever, but don't throw them into the rivers. Don't think that that's doing the right thing. So that's that, that never ends good. And the whole snakehead thing that happened here in Virginia and Maryland, and I think it even made national news, that happened because people were getting rid of their fish into the rivers and stuff like that. So, you know, just avoid it altogether. And this is also why in Virginia and I think now Maryland and a lot of states, this is why piranha are illegal to sell. I can't sell them. I can't buy them. So, and that's because people throw them into the rivers or, or into the streams or into the creeks or the ponds. And all of a sudden, you know, some little kid gets beaten up. It, it's stupid. So just don't even consider that as an option. Okay. So the last thing to talk about here today is disposing of dead fish. Now, <laughs> this one, it, it seems, you know, the stereotypical answer is, ah, oh, you flush them down the toilet. And if you have a bunch of tetras or a bunch of small fish, you can do that. And that's not a problem. But, and I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with doing it that way. I mean, if you have an emotional attachment to a fish and you flush it down the toilet, it's kind of mean, but you know, that's what a lot of people do. I've believe me, there's been so many fish that have gone down my sewer line. Trust me, but maybe you have a fish that you can't do that. I have fallen victim to my own stupidity before where I have thrown a fish into the toilet that did not make it through the toilet. And so I, my stupid self, I'm there taking a fish out of the toilet and ugh, you don't want to do that. It's kind of like the walk of shame. If you run out of gas on your motorcycle and you're walking your motorcycle down the road, you're so ashamed of yourself that you've let this happen. Well, that's what it's like when you have to reach into the toilet and pull out a fish that you knew was too big to go down the drain, but you tried it anyway, cause I'm a man and I'm an idiot. So Flushing them down the toilet, I mean, if they're small enough to make it without any complications, that's certainly acceptable. Uh, if you're on a well and septic, you might not want to do that. But if you're on public, why not? Go ahead. But sometimes you run into them where they're too big. And I had a situation a while back, years ago, where I had a 30-inch a long arowana that died. It was tragic. It was on Father's Day. It was horrible. It was a tragedy and it was a, it was like a death in the family. It was a horrible time. And obviously this fish is not going to go down the drain. What, what do you do? I, I mean, this was a pet. I had him for years. I didn't want to throw him out. I mean, you know, worst case scenario, I guess, if you're somebody that lives in an apartment or something like that and you have a big fish like that, what else are you going to do but take him to the landfill? I mean, that, that's, that's a horrible thought. But you might not have any other choice. You're, you're not going to cut them up and eat them for dinner. I mean, that, that's just weird. So for me, what I did, and I didn't want to do it this way because we were just renting our house, but we buried them in the backyard. I mean, for a fish, that might sound ridiculous to do that, but we did because I wasn't going to take them to the landfill. What else are you going to do? I mean, I wasn't going to just lay them in the backyard to stink and rot and hope the birds come and take them which they would have here in King George, but no, we just went ahead and buried him and, and it was a tragedy and we were sad, but you know, that's, that's all we could do. I mean, if your fish are that big, then you got to do what you got to do. But if you don't have that option because you live in the city or whatever, you know, take them and put them in multiple bags and, you know, maybe put them in a box and take them to the landfill. What else are you going to do? I mean, I know that sounds terrible, but there's not really a whole lot of other options when it comes to that. So that's, that's it folks. I mean, that's in a nutshell, how you get rid of fish and how you dispose of dead fish. I know we could go into a lot more fancy scenarios and stuff like that, but this is just kind of an overall type buzz quick through different ways that you can get rid of fish. I'm sure that there are a lot of other creative ways of doing it out there. So, okay. So let me explain to you the situation that I'm in here. I've already ran my mouth for a long time and I don't want this episode to be way too long. My original idea was that I was going to talk about getting rid of fish and it was going to be a quick one, but 
shame on me. I know I, I run my mouth too much. So I, I ended up going on and on and after editing and stuff like that, it's going to, I'm already at about 45 minutes. I still have to do John's world. So I don't want to involve this email today uh, because it is a big one. And it's, it's one that I think you're going to get a lot out of. And it's one that I, I certainly know about. And so I don't want to rush through it. I want to be able to put some time into this email. So I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do an entire episode on this guy's email. And we're going to do that next week. We're going to move Monster Fish to two weeks from now. Now, this is all part of what I was telling you about. I'm going to start actually working several weeks ahead of time so that I don't miss an episode. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to stop and I'm going to do another episode talking about this email that this guy sent in. And it's a big one. You're going to want to tune in next week. Just to give you a little heads up, this guy went into a local pet store and he started to give some advice to a fellow customer and that customer ripped him a new one. And he was asking me, have I ever dealt with that kind of thing? And it's to me, the topic is egos in the fish keeping community. That's one of the biggest things. And also, you know, the transfer of information and all that kind of stuff. But the fish keeping hobby is a very egotistical world. And so it, we're going to have some fun with that episode. I think it's going to be a good time. I don't know if it's an entire episode, but we're going to talk about that. And then we will also talk about uh, maybe a couple more emails in that episode. So look forward to that next week. But for now, let's move into John's world. I got something mind blowing to talk to you about. John's world. Okay. So John's world, as you know, is an opportunity for me to talk about whatever it is that I want to talk about having nothing to do with the fish keeping hobby. I want to address a couple of things real quick. Last week or two weeks ago, actually, I had mentioned to you that I might start another podcast and I gave you a little taste of the kinds of things that I would like to talk about in that podcast. The response that I got was very positive. It wasn't overwhelming. I, I got, you know, a few, quite a few emails about it. People saying, yes, do it. It sounds like fun. So I think I probably am going to do it. I'm not a hundred percent sure yet. My schedule is absolutely out of control, but um, it's something that I'm looking forward to. And I think I would have a lot of fun with. So I will definitely keep you posted on that, but that's not what I want to talk about this week. I want to talk about something that happened to me over this weekend that it's, it's just a story that's just too good to be true. So, okay. It starts off with a new show that recently was put on to Netflix. The show is called Bloodline. If you have not seen this, if you are a Netflix subscriber, I highly recommend this show to you. It is a fantastic show. And one of the best things about Netflix, it's a, it's a network, Netflix original production, meaning it was never on ABC or Fox or anything like that. Netflix is the one that actually produced this series, just like Orange is the New Black and House of Cards and stuff like that. And the new Daredevil, which is coming up next month. I can't wait. Bloodline is a Netflix original series, so you will never see it if you don't have Netflix. It is worthy of the $8 a month that Netflix costs just for this series. It is brilliant. It is a show that takes place down in the Florida Keys, which is just a paradise. And it's fantastic. The cast, the writing, I could not recommend this show more. What I'm going to talk about today doesn't necessarily have to do with the show. It's in connection with the show, but I don't want to go into a whole lot of details about the show. But but basically, it's a family-type drama, meaning that it centers around the drama that is within a very prominent family in the Florida Keys. So, and it involves murder, and it involves all this stuff. I mean, it's just, it's an incredible show. It's one of those kind of slow-build dramas that, you know, there's no cliffhangers at the end of episodes and stuff like that. It's almost, it's a 13-episode series. It's almost a 13-hour-long movie. It just builds and builds and builds and builds. And by the time you get to the end, your mind is blown. It's fantastic. The cast, it has Kyle Chandler in it, Sam Shepard, Sissy Spacek, uh, Ben Mendelsohn. I mean, it's a great cast of this show. If you haven't seen it, check it out. I'm sure it will be on the front page of Netflix for you. 
But here's the funny thing about this show. I was at my sister's last weekend, and I told her about this. Her and I, we talk about movies, and we talk about TV and music, and we're both 80s rock fanatics. And so we talk about that kind of stuff all the time. And I told her last week, I said, you need to check out this show, Bloodline. It's fantastic. You'll love it. The cast, the story, this, that, this, that. And she was like, yeah, okay, whatever. You know, she doesn't always take my advice when it comes to these shows, but she followed my advice on this one. She texted me after watching the first episode. She said, oh my God, I'm hooked. This show is fantastic. I love it. I can't wait to keep watching it. So now me, it took me a week. I got through the entire series. Loved it. I cannot wait until season two. I'm at the edge of my seat. So she's been texting me throughout the week, like, oh my God, I just watched episode four. It was unbelievable. I can't believe this happened. I can't believe that. I wonder what this. And so we were talking about it all week. Well, Saturday morning, she texts me and it's earlier in the morning. And she says, hey, what are you and Lisa doing right now? I said, nothing. We're sitting here in our pajamas drinking coffee. You know, what are you doing? And she said, I want you and Lisa to come over here right now. My sister lives a mile down the road. So and we're like, all right, whatever, you know, I, Lisa will go get ready. You know how women are. They take forever to get ready. So I'm sitting there for a little while waiting and we go ahead and we go over there. And now I, I just, I don't want to be embarrassing or say anything inappropriate, but, but my sister does not have the same financial challenges that I do. Let's put it that way. They own, they own a very successful business. They work their butts off. And they reap the rewards financially of that. They deserve every single penny that they have. So we go over there and her and I are, my, Lisa and I were like, what, why are they calling us over like this? What, I mean, she, my sister had told me there's nothing wrong. You know, nobody's hurt. Nobody's sick. Nobody, nothing. Just come over here. We want to talk to you about something. So we're trying to figure out what it is when we're on our way over there and we don't figure it out. We get into the house and my sister says, okay, here's what we're going to do. You got a birthday coming up, meaning me. You got a birthday coming up in a, in a couple of months. We want to do something for you for your birthday. I said, okay, cool. You know, that's, that's nice. Thank you. She says, this is what we're going to do. We are going to take you and Lisa on a vacation. Just the two of you. It's just going to be the four of us adults. We're going to take you on a vacation to the Florida Keys. Oh, wow. That's so cool. I was just watching that show. We've been, you know, we're huge fans of this show. And now we're going to go down there to the same area where this was recorded, but it doesn't end there, folks. My sister says, oh, no, no, no. We've made reservations at the resort where that show was filmed. So (laughs) if you've seen Bloodline and you've seen the resort, which I, I think is called the Rayburn House on the show, It's actually called the Moorings Village is what the resort is called. And you can go stay there. There's two months out of the year that are blocked off where they film this show or, you know, the the production company rents the entire resort. But she made reservations for us to go down there and stay for four days, three nights or four nights, actually. I don't know. At the Moorings Village where this show took place. I can't believe it. I mean, it's like. Lisa said to me last night, she said, you know, they're taking on the, us on this fantastic, just unbelievable tropical vacation. They're taking us on this. And she wouldn't have even had this idea if you hadn't recommended the show Bloodline to her. And it's absolutely true. I mean, I, I didn't tell my sister this story because I thought something like this might happen. I just told her because it was a great show and I wanted her to listen to it. But she had this idea. She's going to take us down there to the keys and we're going to stay at that resort where the show is filmed. And it's just, it, my mind is blown. I can't believe it. We haven't gone on a vacation. Just the two of us since it's been like five years since Lisa and I have done something like that because with the business and everything else, we just haven't been able to do it. So I can't believe it. I, I'm so excited. I can't even sit down. Uh, well, I'm sitting down right now, but I'm dancing around in my chair. Cause I can't believe that we're going to go down there and do that. I cannot wait to snorkel down there. It's just, I it, I can't even tell you how excited I am. Not only just the idea of going on a vacation for one, for two, going to the Florida Keys, and for three, staying at the resort where this unbelievable show was filmed. Uh, it's so exciting. I can't wait to do it. You're going to hear a lot more about this trip, trust me, because I I just can't wait. We're going at the end of next month. 
So you'll hear all about it. Trust me. I can't wait. If you haven't watched Bloodline, you have to watch it because that's where I'm going to be. It's a, it's one of the most beautiful shows I've ever seen. It's like if you watched Miami Vice back in the day, that was just a beautiful show. This one is that way too, just because of the setting where it takes place. It's almost like the set is its own character. Beautiful show. Fantastic. I would check it out if I were you. And even if I wasn't going down there, I would still be telling you the same thing because I think it's the best show to come out in a long, long time. So check out Bloodline on Netflix. No, I'm not being paid by Netflix. I wish I was, but check out that show. It is fantastic and it's worth it. Even if you just have eight bucks and you just want to sign up for one month of Netflix, it's absolutely worth that eight dollars to watch just that show. And don't forget, Daredevil's coming out next month, so that's going to be fun too. So there you go, there you have it. I will tell you all about the trip. I'm sure I can't wait for it. Thank you so much for hanging in there with me for John's World today. This has been a lot of fun. Don't forget, tune in next week. We're going to talk all about people getting belligerent in the pet stores. We're going to have fun with it. I think it's going to be a good time. Thank you so much for listening today. Please don't forget to support our sponsors, kgtropicals.com, universalrocks.com, and not a sponsor, but don't forget to check out Southern Delight too. I I promise you they're not paying me a cent for this. I just believe in the product and I want you to check it out if you haven't already. Check out Southern Delight. Great fish food. My fish have certainly responded to it. I'm sure yours will too. Thank you so much for tuning in and we will talk to you next week.